I've been participating in a BBC Science production called Astronauts Do You Have What It Takes? And they basically take 12 members of the public and try and put them through astronaut training or as close to astronaut training as they can get. I was climbing mountains in the Andes and I got an email from the university highlighting that this BBC television programme was going to be made and I thought, yeah, I'd quite like to see if I can be an astronaut, why not? So I filled in the form and sent it off and that sort of began the whole process really. I loved the experience of the whole show, I thought it was incredible. I haven't done any exams since I did my PhD Viva in 2008, so it was interesting for me to go back and be tested. Um, and it was very much a continual process of test as well. It doesn't quite come across maybe in the episodes, but everything we do is being tested. It doesn't matter whether we're having a chat with somebody else or whether we're in a formal test, they're watching everything all the time. I had a few tasks that I really enjoyed. So I really enjoyed the sphere test that was on episode one. There were these spheres about, I don't know, a meter in diameter, and we had to get inside the spheres. And then some instructions were posted through the breathing hole, and one said, Dear Susie, your task is to put your boots on, tie them up, and stand up after 20 minutes. The test will begin when the lights go out. And it was quite fun, it's interesting, isn't it? Just to see how you do, and can I lace my boots as well as trying to count seconds, and what's my strategy for counting seconds? And the other test that I really enjoyed was the centrifuge. So we went to a national testing facility in Sweden, got to go in a centrifuge, which was a mock-up of a real cockpit, and fly around at four or five G. So our faces were melting into the seats, and we had to then be thinking and speaking in Russian during the process as well, which is a language that we'd just been learning as part of the process. So that was a really quite a big challenge, but I really enjoyed it. Um, our students are actually really. I really think good. that the academic side of it is really important. So my advice is, of course, to go and study a science subject that you're really interested in and take it to as high a level as you can. That's obviously a sound piece of advice. But I think for me as well, it's not just about the academics. It's about everything else you do in your life. Life. So started out playing lacrosse, played lacrosse for 10 or 15 years, moved on to be a mountaineer and a rower and, you know, have a broad range of activities and interests and especially sort of sporting interests. I think that's really helpful and I think it helps you become a good team player and generally just be much more of an all-rounder. So we don't have to be the best at a single thing perhaps, but performing well in all of the tasks requires a consistent approach, a much broader range of skills than just a single specialism. I really enjoyed being part of the process, it was an incredible experience for me. Um, but now I'm really looking forward to getting back to doing some research. But also I'm looking forward to taking part in more public outreach events because I've realised how important it is for us to inspire the next generation of people who want to go and become scientists and part of that is sharing our experiences and encouraging people to go and study science. So I'm looking forward to doing more of that in the future.